few weeks ago, we were talking about uh, the anatomy of the skin. The skin covers the body, keeps the water in, it's protective against external environment and pathogens, um, and it's a sensory organ. But in anatomy, we often talk about uh, mucous membranes. There are mucous membranes everywhere. Mucosa is the same thing. What do we mean by a mucosa? Inside the body, there are spaces that are continuous with the outside world. They're continuous with the skin. We have spaces inside us that are the external environment inside us almost. Or, okay, consider when you take a breath. When you breathe in, you're taking in the air from the outside world and you're pulling it into your airways and into your lungs. So the linings of the lungs, the linings of the airways are essentially an external surface inside you, or they are meeting external things inside you. So the mucous membrane has to do what the skin does, but in those internal spaces. So the airway is one of them, but also we have uh, the gastrointestinal tract, the tube that runs all the way through us. We put external stuff into it, travels all the way through us. So that's another external space inside us. And of course, where it comes out the other end, we have the anal canal, uh, we have the vagina, we have the urethra. We have spaces inside us that are again, meeting the outside world that's where we find a mucous membrane, not just at the ends, but all the way through. So where we have an external space inside us or a space inside us that is continuous with the outside world, that's where we find a muc mucosa or a mucous membrane. They're the same things. So a mucous membrane is like the skin, so it has similar functions. So a mucous membrane has to protect us from the outside world, uh, physically to a certain extent, but also from pathogens, viruses, and bacteria. So it stops those microscopic organisms that want to infect the body from getting into the body. And by into the body, I mean all these tissues in here. Um, it is also um, keeping the water and the salts inside us, right? So our body relies on the water and salt concentration within us for the functions of our cells. And as that mucous membrane is meeting the outside world, it needs to stop the water from leaving the body or not stop, limit too much of it leaving the body and going into the outside world. So like the skin, the mucous membranes keep the water inside us. Like the skin, mucous membranes are often full of sensors. Think about inside the mouth. So the mucous membranes usually start where the skin ends, so at the lips, at the nostrils, at the vaginal opening, at the urethral opening, at the anal aperture. Uh, so where the skin ends, it then becomes uh, a mucosa. And the mucosa then is a little bit different. It usually looks nice and red and pink, right? And that's because it's not like the skin, it's not as tough, it's thinner, so we can see the blood vessels within it. So then, because it's not a waterproof barrier like the skin, but it's very similar to the skin, the mucus part of the mucous membrane, it has glands within it, which is secreting a mucus onto its surface inside us, um, which help protect it in a number of ways, uh, stop the cells from drying out. And I think we know what mucus is, right? I think a really good example is in the nasal cavity snot. That's the mucus that we're talking about, but it can vary throughout the body. The structure of a mucosa then might be a little bit like the skin. So we said that the epithelium of the skin, the outermost layer has a number of layers, and a, a mucosa is an epithelium supported by a loose connective tissue. Now, if you think about the mucosa, in the airway, in the gastrointestinal tract, and you think about the different jobs that that layer performs, the mucosa is different in different places. So we, uh, the skin is keratinized, right? That's what makes it tough and waterproof. And as we go into the oral cavity, the epithelium is, it has multiple layers, which makes it tough. The closer you are to the skin, the more likely it is to be keratinized, but the deeper you go, the less likely it is to be keratinized. Um, and it's gonna be pinker and redder and thinner. 
Um, of course, um, those mucus secreting glands sometimes have developed specialized functions. In the oral cavity, they're producing saliva. And one of the jobs of saliva is to start off digestion and help with taste as well in that respect. And then of course, if you think about the airways, you go into the airway in the alveoli, where we have gaseous exchange occurring. Well, one, for gaseous exchange to occur from gases from the air, to pass to the blood, they need to dissolve in a fluid. So that alveoli needs to be a mucous membrane because we need to have some fluid in there for that, for the gases to dissolve into and pass through. But also it protects the cells. We can then have a very, very thin layer of cells, a single layer of squamous flat cells in the alveoli, which is great for gaseous exchange, but of course is very delicate. So if you keep those cells moist, then they're protected. If the cells dry out, they die. I think we've experienced this as well, right? If you if your mouth dries out, you notice it, it gets very uncomfortable. If you sleep with your mouth open and a blocked nose all night, your mouth dries out and you know what that feels like, right? So the mucus secreted by the mucous membranes protect that mucous membrane and mean it doesn't have to be as thick and as tough as skin. Some animals, like dogs, have actually uh, made use of this mucous membrane in the mouth um, for temperature regulation, for thermoregulation. You know, dogs pant. That's how they lose some of their heat. So again, the mucosa has another function of the skin, which we use for thermoregulation. And if you follow um, the mucosa through the gastrointestinal tract, we know that there are cells in there secrete, there are glands that are secreting digestive enzymes like the saliva um, in the stomach and beyond. So a mucosa is like the skin, protecting external surfaces inside us but varies a little bit more because it has adapted to specialized functions like digestion and the absorption of nutrients or gaseous exchange in the lungs. And a mucous membrane is very important immunologically, just like so the skin is, as I said, a physical barrier to the outside world, but it's also a physical barrier to pathogens. And in the layer underneath, if the skin is broken, um, pathogens like viruses and bacteria get picked up in the, in the fluid and taken through the lymphatic system, presented to immune cells in lymph nodes. Uh, likewise, in the mucosa, because there's a fluid lining the surface, the bacteria and the viruses are likely to get stuck in that mucus, on the mucous membrane preventing them from getting too far into the body. And again, underneath that mucous membrane, that's where we find the immune system. Of course, we see the tonsils back here. Those are collections of, uh, of, of lymphatic tissue, parts of the immune system. So that's all we mean by a mucous membrane um, or a mucosa. We can use the terms in interchangeably. Where the skin ends and we go inside the body, that's where we find a mucous membrane. It's pink and it's red because it tends to be thinner. You don't have melanocytes, you don't have the, the thicker keratinized layer. So you can see um, the blood vessels beneath, or at least the redness of that. Um, and that continues through the body. And it can be a sensory organ like the skin, but it changes as you go along that, that internal tube or that internal space. Mucous membranes, ticked. See you next week.